With Thaddeus Young in the lineup since he was acquired at the deadline, Toronto owns what would amount to an Eastern Conference best 65.4% winning percentage. The soon-to-be 34-year-old 15-year veteran hasn't only added a new element to Nick Nurse's system with his passing, versatile defense, and floor spacing at the power forward spot, but Young's mentorship of Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes has been equally important. Despite President Masai Ujiri's roster having an average age of 25.6, it only took the Raptors one losing year before getting right back into the championship picture. So this video shows you the shocking truth about the Toronto Raptors and my predictions for their first round series against Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. Right before that, only 9.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. As the only Canadian team in the association, Raptor fans often complain about their team getting unfair treatment from the refs. And those fans may actually have a point after all, based off a new study by Tom Haberstroh and the basketball Illuminati, which found that Toronto ranks near the bottom of the league in average referee quality. Only the Orlando Magic, Washington Wizards, Houston Rockets, and Cleveland Cavaliers have played fewer games in front of the league's best referees this season. This study looked at the experience of each referee crew, how many rookie refs each team received, and how many times a team received a referee from the 2021 NBA Finals. Unsurprisingly, the best referees have gone to the most popular teams this year, including the Golden State Warriors and Los Angeles Lakers, who rank first and second respectively in the rankings. The league also prioritizes nationally televised games, ensuring the best referees are refereeing the biggest games. Take that information as you will, but let's give credit to this Raptor team for keeping their cool and staying focused on what they can control, despite not always getting a favorable whistle. As you may know, Toronto closed out the year winning 14 of their last 18 games, and while the playoffs are a whole new season, the continuity and confidence this group just built up should serve them well. Aside from the brilliant game planning from the coaching staff, five players averaging at least 15 plus points per game in Siakam, Van Vliet, Trent Jr., Ananobi, and Barnes, the Raptors' biggest strength is their offensive rebounding. Having a ridiculous seven players in the rotation with at least a seven foot one wingspan makes this Toronto squad absolutely relentless on the glass. Whether it's Chris Boucher, Precious Achua, Kem Birch, or even Spicy P, this Raptor roster is equipped with springy big bodies who are extremely mobile as well and have solid strength. Speaking of that board getting, Fred Van Vliet was asked if the Raptors have a plan B or if they have to play to their identity of crashing the offensive glass in order to win games, responding with quote, yeah, come on, it's Nicky Nurse, baby. Van Vliet makes a valid point, as Tricky Nicky's pulled some shocking bunnies out of his hat in the past. Just think about his infamous box and one on Stephen Curry in 2019's finals, and how he's made a habit of putting together top-notch scouting reports and shutting down opposing teams' top players just by changing his defensive game plan from possession to possession. Much to the delight of Masai Ujiri, Bobby Webster, and Coach Nick Nurse, in a Raptor uniform, the journeyman forward and signature trade deadline acquisition Thaddeus Young has made an elite 40% of his two shots from beyond the three-point line per game. That deep range efficiency is especially deadly because Thad forces his defender, which is usually a center, given he's often playing as a small ball five, out to the perimeter, therefore opening up the paint for other Raptor attackers. Then there's Thad Young's facilitating, extra length, and the switchability in pick and roll scenarios that he provides. Masai could have dealt for a high volume shot creator at the deadline, which likely would have messed up their chemistry. That's probably what I would have done. But simply trading for an experienced, solid, well-rounded glue guy like Thaddeus Young ended up making everything tick for the raps. Thad was asked by the Toronto media if there was one piece of advice he could give a young guy asking about the playoffs and how the game changes, saying, quote, Yes, it's a completely different game. My advice to them is just through all the madness and crazy stuff that's going to be going on throughout the course of the game, all the adversity that you're going to fight, just manage to stay level-headed and stay poised, never get too high or too low, always try to be even keel, and that's what's gotten me to this point, always just being patient, poised, and just being even keeled and not trying to do too much outside of what I do, but just bring in what I do to the game each and every night. In terms of the outlook of Toronto's roster, here's what the team's veteran leader Thaddeus had to say regarding that. You know, from day one, you know, I 
when I first walked in, I said, yeah, this, this team can be special. And uh, we have some special pieces and we have like a special group of guys. You know, it's just a matter of just making sure that we all together each and every time, every moment that we, we step foot on the court. Is it completely, sorry, Doug, or is it completely unique to any other team you've been a part of? Or? Uh, yeah, it's very unique. Um, you know, I think it's unique from the standpoint of like, all the guys are like the same height. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but the good thing is like, like we, we all are interchangeable. We all can play different positions. Like, you know, you never know who can push the break. You never know who's gonna, you know, be the shoot guard, you know, who's gonna be the power forward. Like, you know, I'm, you know, lined up at, against Joel sometimes. And, you know, it, it's just crazy. Like, this is like the first time I've been on that play is like, without a center most of the time. <laughs> but, you know, we figure out a way to win games and we figure out a way to, to wreak havoc. Now for my preview and prediction for the Raptors against the Sixers in the first round. It's safe to say Philly and Toronto are division rivals at this point, having met twice in the postseason before, with both series going the distance, literally to the final shot at the final buzzer in Game 7, and are moments which Raptor and Sixer fans everywhere are never going to forget. In 2001, Vince Carter led the Raptors to the second round for the first time in franchise history, where Allen Iverson and the 76ers were waiting. The series became a classic Iverson and Carter duel as they traded 50-point games and made the cover of Sports Illustrated. But VC would miss the final shot at the buzzer, and Philly would advance and end up making the finals. 18 years later, Kawhi Leonard would cause PTSD for Sixer fans and overwhelming joy to Raptor fans as his once-in-a-lifetime series winning shot took seven bounces off the rim to fall through. Toronto won the back and forth duel against Philly and went on to secure their franchise's first championship. This year, the 76ers have the two best talents on paper in James Harden and Joel Embiid, but from there, Siakam, Van Vliet, Trent Jr., Ananobi, and Barnes are probably better than any other Sixer. But the X factor for probably the series in general is how Tyrese Maxey performs. Overall, while the Sixers have the best player in this series, which is the MVP candidate Joel Embiid, the Raptors defend Joel as well as anyone. By collapsing quickly and cutting off his penetration, Nick Nurse does a great job forcing Embiid to give up the ball, and that leads to turnovers. Given he's not that great at passing out of double teams or from the post, Embiid averages 2.5 turnovers against the Raptors this year, and he averaged 4.3 last year. Meanwhile, in the 2019 playoffs, he had 28 total in the 7 games. The other factor you can't forget about is just how bad the 76ers are when Embiid's off the court. This year, Philly scores 11.5 fewer points per 100 possessions whenever Embiid sits. It definitely feels in some capacity like the Raptors are in a great position to upset the higher-seeded Sixers. You could argue that's just my bias talking, but the Raptors' defense, O-rebounding, coaching advantage, plus the momentum they've built up down the stretch should be the deciding factors. Also, considering the Raps have beaten Philly twice already with James Harden, once without both Van Vliet and Ananobi, while having won the season series against Philly 3-1, that's why I think Toronto sends Embiid home for the second time and makes Sixer GM Daryl Morey reevaluate his coaching staff and personnel around Embiid after a first-round exit. I'm taking the Raptors to win this series in six, or potentially seven games. But I want to know your prediction for the Sixers against the Raptors. Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says, I think the Grizzlies win in seven against the Timberwolves. It'll be a fun and close matchup due to how explosive and young they are. But I think that the Grizzlies have more experience in these type of games from the bubble till now. However, I'll not be surprised if a healthy Timberwolves team defeats them. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.